Hi everybody and welcome back to the Upper Room. This week we're talking about idolatry. The first commandment that God gave us was Exodus chapter 20 verses 3 through 5. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water underneath the under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I the Lord thy God am a jealous God. So we are told not to worship any graven images. But what constitutes a graven image? Well, we know that Aaron in Exodus, Moses' brother, made a golden calf out of all the jewelry of the Israelites. And they worshipped it. This is a statue of an animal. This is a statue of something that God created. The calf didn't deliver them from the hands of Pharaoh out of Egypt. God did. Idol worship was part of daily life uh, back in those days when the Israelites were slaves in Egypt. The Egyptians worshipped idols and all the Greeks worshipped idols with the Greek gods. And so <clears throat> this has been going on for a really long time. You have Hindus that worship all of their graven images with, with all their animals and different types of beasts, as well as uh, Buddhists. They also worship, um, you know, statues of men and different mythological creatures. So we can see that God warns for us not to worship these statues, not to bow down to them, not to ask them to save us or cut a tree down and carve a man out of it and thank the image of the man for giving you that tree. Uh, we were specifically warned against this. The Druids did this in Ireland uh, for many, many years before St. Patrick uh, converted the entire island. Um, so this is something that uh, is a demonic activity. And we know that because we know that the devil himself wants us to worship it. After Jesus had fasted in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry and the devil came and tempted him. Matthew chapter 4, verses 9 through 10. And he said to him, All these things I will give you, if you bow down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Go, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and serve him alone. So we know that the devil wants us to bow down and worship him in the same way that we worship God. We also can see that demons are behind these statues, are behind these idols. And we can and we see this in the book of Revelations, where the angel is telling John to write down everything that he sees, and is instructed to write down everything that he hears from the angels. One of the things he wrote down is, in the book of Revelations, chapter 9, verse 20, the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands, so as not to worship demons and the idols of gold and silver and of brass and of stone and of wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk. So we know that demons can be behind these graven images and these statues if they are worshipped. We also know that uh, we also know that priests have been given the power and authority of God to cast demons out of places, of possessions, of people, because they have the authority of Jesus Christ over unclean spirits. We can also see in the book of Exodus, where God instructed Moses to build the Ark of the Covenant. And on the lid of the Ark of the Covenant, he instructed him to fashion two cherubims, which are angels, to be fashioned to be placed on top of the Ark of the Covenant. And between those two cherubim would be a mercy seat. And that's where Moses would sit and he would commune with God and he would be able to communicate with him from that seat in between these two images of angels. So we can see that images in themselves can be holy and can be used for holy purposes just as God instructed Moses to design the Ark of the Covenant and to make it with cherubims on top. Did the Israelites worship the cherubims on top of the Ark of the Covenant? No, they didn't worship it, but it was still considered to be a holy weapon from God 
that he instructed them to build. Just as the Israelites didn't worship the cherubims on top of the Ark of the Covenant that was considered one of their most holiest weapons given to them by God, we at the Catholic Church do not worship the statues that are in it, and the statues that are in it are considered to be holy, much just like the cherubims are. We don't worship those statues just like the Israelites didn't worship the cherubims. And priests have the power to bless items. We know this from the book of Acts, chapter 9, verse 12. So that even handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick, and their illnesses were cured, and the evil spirits left them. This verse is talking about when St. Paul blessed items and had them taken to people. And evil spirits left those people, and their illnesses left them as well. Because St. Paul was made a priest by Jesus Christ himself. And he was, be, he was given God's power and authority here on earth over unclean spirits. That is the same power that our priests have today. So when they bless the images that are and make them holy of our saints, who are brothers and sisters, who we do not worship, and who we ask to help us pray together, makes it a very holy and righteous thing to do because we are focusing all of our prayer, all of our intentions, all of our worship to God alone. And we're asking our righteous brothers and sisters to join us in praise. So thanks again for watching The Upper Room. I'm Jared. I'll see you again next week.